everyone, this is Colin Champ. We're back with episode five. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about another one of those foods that has been chastised for quite some time. And a lot of us are left without direction in terms of what to do when we actually eat them. And cheese is, is one of the biggest foods that's really just been chastised for its fat content over the past several decades, leaving a lot of us unsure how to choose our cheese. So in this episode, I'm gonna go through what I do uh, to choose my cheese, and cheese is a large part of, of my diet. Not a large part, but a significant part of my diet because I really enjoy it. So over the next couple minutes, I'm gonna talk about what I do. So first off, let's zoom up onto this cheese. So as we zoom in here on my three favorite cheeses, um, this is a Fontina from Italy. This is a Manchego from Spain, and this is an Appalachian Tone from the good old uh, America. This is, comes from Virginia. The first thing I look for is, is the cheese from a quality source? So I know that all three of these come from a quality source. This is kind of the hunter-gathering aspect of cheese. Either ask your cheese man, the grocery store, go to their website, or even if you can, go to the place where they're making it, and then you can see for yourself to make sure that it comes from a quality source. All three of these come from a quality source. Number two is, is it pasteurized? And if it is, I generally don't eat pasteurized cheese. I turn towards raw, unpasteurized cheeses as these keep the healthy bacteria present. They also have higher nutritional values. This goes back to number one. Is it from a quality source? If you're eating it unpasteurized, you generally want it coming from a quality source. This way you don't get any kind of crazy infections. Though in actuality, there's really, the numbers are very low and there's no difference between unpasteurized and pasteurized cheese in terms of infections when you look at the numbers. All three of these cheeses are aged for 60 days or more. And realistically, all cheeses that you get that are raw are gonna be aged that long because it's required by law. The longer they're aged, the more uh, they might, or excuse me, the lower chance you have of getting some kind of crazy infection like listeria. And in raw milk, the bacteria and en enzymes digest a lot of the sugar. This includes lactose, and then other dairy components get broken down as well, making these cheeses easier to digest. Number three, and this is non-negotiable, is the cheese made from milk that are from cows that graze on 100% grass. So this kind of cheese has higher amounts of cancer-fighting conjugated linoleic acid and also butyric acid, it has more omega-3 fats, and one study even showed that cows that graze at a higher altitude produce more CLA. So all three of these are reasonably high altitudes. This Fontina comes from alpine cows at a very high altitude, so again, it has a much more conjugated linoleic acid. Number four, are there any added ingredients that we should be careful of? A lot of times they have other things added like rennet or cultures, and those are not too big of a deal, but if you turn towards a craft shed, shredded cheese, for instance, there's about 100 ingredients, and one of these is an antibiotic known as neomycin, so that's obviously very, very concerning. None of these have any, any considerable added ingredients, basically just cheese and a little bit of cultures. Uh, we're eating cheese here, not a chemistry experiment. So how long is it aged? I always look at that, but again, all three of these are gonna be aged 60 days or more, with these two aged over 90 days, the middle one aged at least 60 days or longer. Uh, the reason being here, the more cheeses are aged, the higher amount of vitamin K they have. This does many healthy things for us, including pull calcium from our blood and into our bones and reducing our risk of coronary artery disease and cancer. So how long should it be aged, you ask? We don't really know for sure. Three months seems like uh, the maximal, the best amount, um, but realistically data is sparse, so it's tough to say. Again, you're gonna get at least 60 days as you see in all of these. Is it too delicious? This is my last but not least issue here. So is the cheese too delicious so that you're gonna eat it all in one sitting? I do that often with the Fontina. As you can see here, I ate half of it just during the filming of this episode. So that doesn't mean I don't buy it, but I buy it much more sparingly than some of the other cheeses. So once a week, maybe I'll get one of these as a treat. Again, I'll eat it in the whole sitting. Uh, with all of my foods, if something is too delicious or something causes you to eat it so quickly, something causes you to act like an uncontrollable uh, preschooler, which this one does for me, try to minimize how much you're buying it. So that's what I do when I choose cheese. Those are my steps. Uh, I love to enjoy my cheese on the front porch with a nice glass of red wine following the same guidelines from our last episode. That's my ultimate time for rest, relaxation. It almost puts me in a meditative like state. So again, cheese is, is really a significant part of, of my heritage, my, my lifestyle, my diet. And these are the things I do. And I hope these will help you to choose the healthiest, most anti-cancer cheese out there. Thanks everyone.
Hope you enjoyed the episode.